This is the lesson on independent events. This is day two. You have already have seen 11.3 day one. If you didn't, you know, please watch the other video before. So this is 11.3 day two and we're on page 16 in your packets. This goes along with the eighth grade purple textbook volume B page 246. So we're on compound or multi-stage independent probability. Two spinners are spun and a tree diagram is made to show all of the possible outcomes. Spinner one, you can get a one, two, three, or four. So you have four outcomes on here. Spinner two, you can get a one, a two, or a three. So you have three outcomes on that spinner. So I know four times three using the counting principle I should have a total of 12 outcomes in my list. So I put in the headings here for spin one, spin two, getting a one, two, or a three. The tree diagram's partially drawn. The outcomes are not listed. So getting a one and a one, a one and then a two, a one and then a three, a two and then a one, a two and then a two, a two and then a three, a three and then a one, a three and then a two, a three and then a three, and four, one, four, two, four, and three. Okay, so yes, there are 12 of them. So we have a couple questions to look at here. What's the probability of getting one and then two? Well, it shows up one time here, it's this one. It's one out of 12. The probability of getting an even number and then a three. So even number and then a three, so that's a two and a three, I'll put a little X here, or a four and a three. That's a total probability of two out of 12. The probability of getting two and then an even number. Two and then an even number, that's two with a two, well it only shows up one out of 12 times. And the probability of getting four and then an odd number. So four and an odd number would be like four one and four three, which shows up two out of 12 times. So looking at the tree diagram, I can look for my probabilities that are listed here in the box. Well, what happens if I didn't have my tree diagram? I could use the multiplication rule for probability, which we saw back on page nine in our packets. The multiplication rule says, to find the probability of a compound event, A and B, multiply each individual event's prob probability. So, for instance, spinner one would be my event A. On spinner one, if it has a one, a two, a three, and a four on it, so the first spinner had one, two, three, and four on it, the probability of getting a one was one-fourth. The probability on spinner two, which would be my B event, this would be spin two, this would be spinner one, if I multiply those individual probabilities together, their product, one out of four chances of getting a one on the first spinner, times a one out of three chances of getting a two on the second spinner, would give me a probability of one twelfth. I wouldn't need to see the entire tree diagram to figure out that there were 12 of them. I multiply the individual probabilities together. The probability of getting an even number first, well, my spinner had one, two, three, and four on it, so there were two of them, two out of four possibilities to get an even, and uh, three on the second spinner, well, there was only one three out of three of them, so two-fourths times one-third gives me two twelfths. The probability of getting a two on the first spinner, well that was one fourth, times the probability of an even number on the second spinner, well the second spinner only has one even number, the two, one out of three chances there, so that's a probability of one twelfth. The probability of getting a four on the first spinner, one out of four faces on the spinner were a four, and an odd number, well, one and three are two odd numbers, so two out of the three possibilities on the second spinner, one-fourth times two-third gives me two-twelfths. 
So not looking at the tree diagram, I could have figured out those exact same probabilities that I found. These are the same ones that are in the table up here. Same answers looking at the tree diagram, seeing all 12 of the outcomes and counting them, or multiplying using the multiplication rule of probability, multiplying the individual probabilities of each event to get the total probability, the product of 1 12 2 12 1 12 and 2 12. So now on to page 17. Construct a tree diagram to show the outcomes. The probability of multi-stage events is found by multiplying the individual probabilities from each stage of the experiment. That multiplication rule that we saw back on page 9 and in yesterday's video. Flip a fair coin twice. Well, I know that I can get either a heads or a tails on a coin. So first flip, flip number one, I can get a heads or a tails. Well, when I go to flip the second coin, I can also get a heads or a tails. So flip two, and my outcomes, so don't forget your headings, listing all of them, heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. Let's come over to our chart here. Looking at the tree diagram, H comma T means heads on the first, then a tails on the second. Order counts. Heads, then tails. So the first one says probability of heads both being heads. Well, that only shows up one time out of the four. Probability of heads, then tails. That shows up one time out of the four. Probability of head and tail. Notice it's not H comma T. That means head and tail or tail and head. Order doesn't matter. So for this one, there are two out of four possibilities there. Two fourths is that probability. Both of them being the same, well that's heads, heads, and tails, tails. Two out of four, and at least one head. So at least one head. Well, two heads is at least one head. Head, tail is at least one head. Tail head is at least one head. So that's three out of four. Three fourths is that. 75% chance that you're going to get at least one head when you flip two coins. Number two, spin the spinner twice. So I have four things for the first spin times four things for the second spin, which means that I should have a total of 16 outcomes here. Going to be a big tree diagram. So spread the numbers, one, two, three, and four, pretty equally down your paper there. And yes, I have four possibilities for my first spin, spin one. I'm going to put a heading on that. And I have four possibilities for my second spin. So I'm putting in all my one, two, threes, and fours, four branches, because yes, I have four possibilities in my second spin, and I'm going to put a heading up here, spin number two. Outcomes, now I know there should be 16 of them, four times four, using the counting principle. So one, one, one comma two, one comma three, one comma four. 2 comma 1, and you don't have to put the commas in if you don't want to. I just don't want it to look like 22 though. So 2 comma 3, a 2 and then a 4, a 3 and then a 1, a 3 and then a 2, a 3 and then a 3, a 3 and then a 4. 4 comma 1 does mean 4 first, 1 second, 4 2, 4 3, and 4 4. So there's my 16 possibilities. Now, looking at my outcomes, I'm going to answer these probability questions that I have in this box. What's the probability of getting a 1 and then a 3? 1 and then a 3, there's 1 out of 16 possibilities there, or the probability of being 1 16th. Move that up a little bit. The probability of getting a 1 and 3. Now that means 
one, three, and three, one. The order doesn't matter there. So one, three, and three, one, that gives me two out of 16. Probability that they're both even, both even. Well, two and two, two and four, four and two, whoops, gotta move it down a little bit, and four and four. So there are four out of 16. Probability of doubles, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. So four out of 16. Probability of at least one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven having at least one, two. Probability of both drawings, three does not appear. So no threes, no threes. Let's see, um, one, two, oh, not that one, it's a three. Three, four, five, six. Oh, gotta, gotta skip all of the threes and ones first. Seven, eight, nine. So there are nine of them, nine out of 16, highest probability we've had so far, where a three does not appear. So obviously I wouldn't check anything in the three branch here because those all have threes. Probability of a sum of five. Getting a sum of five. Well, one plus four, three plus, two plus three, that means three plus two, and four plus one. So that's four out of 16. Probability of a sum less than five. Less than five, okay. So less than five, one plus one, one plus two, one plus three, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 2, is that going to be it? Sum of less than 5? No. Uh, 3 plus 1, yep. And I think that's it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 out of 16. And the probability the sum is at least 3. Well, I know all of these are at least 3 because it's 3 and something or 4 and something. At least three. Oh, that's all of them except for this one. The very first one has a sum of two. All the rest of them are at least three. So that answer is all the rest, 15 out of 16. One of them is not, so all the rest have to be a sum of at least three. On to page 18. Using the addition rule, not multiplication rule, addition rule to solve probabilities with independent events. Hmm. A jar contains eight green marbles and four red marbles. One marble is randomly drawn and the color of marbles is noted. The marble is then put back into the jar and the second marble is randomly drawn. Then the color of the second marble is also noted. Beautiful tree diagram here. Headings and outcomes, everything's all listed. And we have some fractions on here. 8 out of 12 are green and 4 out of 12 are red. Okay. Suppose you want to find the probability of drawing two marbles of the same color. There are two favorable outcomes, green, green, and red, red. They are mutually exclusive. They cannot occur at the same time. That's what mutually exclusive means. So the probability of red, red would equal 16 1 44ths which this is a boo-boo, this should be one-ninth. That's an oops there. Um, it does reduce to one-ninth, but we don't care about that, so 16 out of 144 is good. And the probability of green-green is 8 twelfths times 8 twelfths, which is 64 out of 144, which would reduce to four-ninths. So they have these switched. That's an oops there. So the probability of red, red, or green, green, you would find the sum of their probabilities. Or, or means we're going to add them. So the probability of getting the same color means green, green, or red, red. So use the addition rule of probability. So um, they showed them in reduced form. I'm not going to show that. I'm going to show red, red was 16 out of 144. And green, green was 64 
out of 144. So adding those together, out of the 144 possibilities, there are 80 of them that are out of 144, adding these two together, 16 plus 64. 80 possibilities of getting red, red, or green, green. Same color. So 80 out of 144. In general, two mutually exclusive events, A and B, can happen at the same time. The addition rule of probability says the probability of A or B add the probabilities when it was A and B getting a, a red and a green you would multiply the probabilities but when it says red or green for instance or red red or green green or you add so when the probability has a question about or it's adding when it says and it's multiplying Solve probability problems with independent events involving more than one favorable outcome. Alex is taking two tests. The probability of him passing each test is 8 tenths. Find the probability that Alex passes both tests. To make a tree diagram, first find the probability that Alex fails the test. So we know passing is 8 tenths, so not passing better than saying failing, is two tenths. So you can see here the probability of passing, it's listed as a decimal here. It could have said eight tenths and two tenths. Could have been fractions, but they listed the probability as a decimal. So eight tenths for passing, two tenths for not passing. Second test, eight tenths for passing, two tenths for not passing. So you can see the tree diagram with its headings and outcomes. So Alex could pass, pass, pass them both, pass and not pass one of them, or pass, fail, fail the first one, pass the second one, or fail them both. Hopefully that doesn't happen. So the probability of pass, pass would be 8 tenths times 8 tenths, which is 64 hundredths. The probability that Alex passes both tests, which was what the question was, and you can see it's already answered here for us. They've given us the solution, the answer. The probability of him passing both tests was 64 hundredths. Or we could have answered it as the fraction 64 out of 100 times he'll pass both tests. Letter B, find the probability that he passes exactly one of the tests. Alex passing exactly one of the tests means that he either passes the first test or the second test, but not both of them. So, using the addition rule of probability, he could pass the first, fail the second, or he could fail the first and pass the second. That's passing just one. So the probability of pass-fail would be 16 hundredths, because 8 tenths times 2 tenths is 16 hundredths here, plus another 16 hundredths. So multiplying first and then adding the probability that he passes exactly one test is 32 hundredths. That he passes two tests is 64 hundredths. So the probability that he fails both tests, fail, fail, that would be two tenths times two tenths, which would only be four hundredths. So failing and then passing, this would be 16 hundredths, two tenths times eight tenths. Passing and failing, that would be 16 hundredths. Passing, passing, that's 64 hundredths. And if I add these together, yes, I will get one, which means 100%. All of the possibilities have to be listed there, and they are. 64 hundredths, 16 hundredths, 16 hundredths, and four hundredths. They all add to one whole, which means all of the items are shown in the tree diagram, all the possibilities. So the probability that he passes exactly one, 3,200. And that's it for today.